watching the It's Her Time podcast with Cody and Jess. Welcome back to this episode. Today, I have an amazing guest, somebody that is actually near and dear to my heart, Mm -hmm. Shay Durbin. She is a certified foot zoning practitioner, and we're going to explain what that means um, in a little bit, but I'm excited for you girls to learn from her because she has played an amazing part in my own personal healing journey. So today on this episode, we're going to talk about how important it is for us to be able to utilize the tools that are around us to be able to listen to our body and to understand and language so that we can help assist our bodies with healing. But before we do that, we're going to go into a Mixers Girl Say. So for this episode's Mixers Girl Say, first of all, should we talk about these microphones? (laughs) I feel like we're reporters out on the street. (laughs) Sending it over to Cody Sanders live. live. (laughs) So we forgot the the camera too. (laughs) We forgot the microphone stand. So we are holding the microphone. We are resourceful. We're using our hands to hold our mics. We can do that. We're just making do. That's why we have them. You know what? You have a funny story yeah. about when, remember your story about New York? Yeah, this is them. what this reminds me of, actually. When I was, I just was in New York, and I was in Times Square, and we were seeing our billboard for her baby. It was so exciting um, to see that up there in the bright lights. But I had this film crew come up to me and like shove a microphone in my face and ask me, um, tell us who your celebrity lookalike is. All right? So I thought, this would be fun. I could ask you what who your celebrity lookalike is. I don't know if I always see it, but I get Mandy Moore a lot. Well, I, she's beautiful. Back in the blonde days. Yeah, I get Mandy yeah. Moore blonde days. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh. I think you just are a celebrity. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Not the People probably get told that and, and think it's a great compliment being told they look uh, okay. like you. No. Moving on. <laughs> Times Square. Yes. Cody. Yes. Yes. So did, what did you say? Oh, you know what? I never get told that I look like celebrities, but the only, okay, back in high school, this is going to date me. There was a popular show that was called The Wonder Years. Do you know what The Wonder Years yeah. is? Okay. There was an older sister um, that every, and I did, I actually did look a lot like her because I had really long hair back then, long blonde hair, and I was a little hippie-ish and um, <laughs> just lost her earring. That's okay. See, we're resourceful. Just grab it, put it on while I'm talking. <laughs> Anyhow, I was told that I look like her, but as an adult, the only person I've ever been told I look like is the mom on the haunted mansion. It's <laughs> I don't well, know. Well, we I do love it. Halloween. We so. do. Um, she's beautiful. She's yeah. black. Um, so, but you know, maybe there's some features that I, I mean, that. I would totally love it if if that was true. So, anyhow, I just thought that was funny. But yeah. That was my answer. That was the only thing that came to my mind when yeah. they asked me. Well, that's why we're holding mics. <laughs> Plain and simple. We <laughs> forgot mic stands. Um, we are going to pop into Mixers Girls Say. And for this episode, mm-hmm. we're going to talk about um, pregnancy. Let's see the question. What's the hardest thing about being mm. pregnant that no one ever talks about? Oh, I'm excited to There's hear what they say. There's quite the list. Oh, yeah. A what lot was of you something submitted. that you experienced that you didn't feel like anyone ever talked about? Well, okay. First of all, why do they call it morning sickness when you're sick Sick all all day day? long? Yes. And I was told that like you're only sick during that first trimester. I was sick the The entire time, time, but that's why I was so motivated to help develop her baby because now I know more than I did back then about how I can help prevent that. Yeah. We both Mm -hmm. had super morning sickness. Yeah. The worst. All day, night, all day. Nine months sickness. <laughs> so we wanted her baby to help women. Yes. Okay. Some of the things that um, you women said. say. Mm-hmm. Um, pelvic floor pain in the third trimester. Oh, yeah. Everything's just stretching down there. Yeah. All kinds of things are happening to our bodies during that whole pregnancy, but especially during that trimester. Oh, this is tough. Constant anxiety about baby safety. Mm-hmm. Currently 27 weeks pregnant, but have just recovered from two miscarriages. That's tough. Mm-hmm. That, that is, is tough. tough. Yep. Um, weight gain and body image issues. Mm-hmm. Also, yeah. it can relate to that. Can relate to that as mm-hmm. well. I feel like pregnancy, I was so young mm-hmm. as well. And so just having a really young figure and I hadn't really even yeah. grown into like my f- woman body. Yes, your womanly body. Yes. Womanly body. Yes. So I felt like that wasn't something I understood necessarily 
was just mm-hmm. adding curves and features that I didn't have because yeah. I was also so young and had it, my body hadn't quite changed. Yeah. Did it's you just experience hard. That? I totally did. Yeah. I mean, I was very young when yeah. I had my kids. And so, yeah, I definitely remember that. And then the stretch marks and things like that, it was that part. Yeah. I mean, I had two kids over 10 pounds. So they, and you had twins. So yeah. it's like, yeah, that was a number. Yeah. Uh, quite a few people say that they, um, no one prepared them for the insomnia. Oh, yeah. You know, and it kicks in before the baby's born. And I almost wonder if that's just part of nature trying to help prepare you so that when you are up all night nursing your baby that you're kind of used to that. But yeah. then at the same time, it's like you just need sleep to just prepare you for the yeah. whole like labor experience and then the recovery. And so, I mean, you might have moments where you're up through the night, mm-hmm. but just try to find those little pockets of time during the day to get those naps in because you are going to need all the rest that you can get. And it's the yeah. best thing to help you recover. The last thing I'm going to say is quite a few women also wrote in like anxiety or pregnancy depression. And I actually, um, I appreciate that women are writing this in because hopefully by us letting you know that so many women are writing this in, for those of you listening, you can know that you're not alone in mental health struggles during pregnancy. I think oftentimes when women are pregnant, um, the expectation is that you should just be the happiest you've ever been because Mm -hmm. you're carrying your baby. And it is, it can be such a fun time, but you're also carrying a lot of um, concern and worry and stress and you feel really um, responsible for the Mm -hmm. health of your baby. And I just, it can feel overwhelming. So yeah, you're not alone. Thanks for sharing with us. You're never alone. Women relate to so many things. And thank you for uh, your input. And thanks for letting us talk about it. We'll get into the episode. Mixers is a company made for women by women. Each of our products have been carefully and lovingly crafted to support you in all stages of your life, providing you with the optimal health you deserve. Each ingredient we handpick is 100% all natural, backed by science, and chosen specifically to better your life physically, mentally, and hormonally. Each product empowers your body to take charge of its monthly hormonal shift and flows, empowering you to live life to the fullest. Let mixers take care of your needs from sunup to sundown, and you take care of the rest. Check us out at mixers.com, M-I-X-H-E-R-S. All right. Well, excellent. Okay. We're going to just start this conversation off right by you just saying hi to our audience and telling us a little bit about you and your story and your background. Yes. So I am Shay or Shaylee, and I got into foot zoning because when I turned 21, I started not feeling very good. Um, actually feeling horrible. I didn't know what was wrong with me. I was a D1 athlete. I was running track in college. I was super in shape. I felt amazing. And then overnight, I just got super, super sick. And I knew something was wrong. And um, I called my mom and I'm like, I don't feel good. I can't get up. I can't run. I'm tired. I feel like I'm losing weight. I'm losing my hair. My skin's breaking out. And she knew it was serious because I don't usually, I didn't usually ever not feel good and started taking me to different doctor's appointments and they didn't really have any answers for Mm, me. mm -hmm. They were just like, you know, let's get you on, you can get on antidepressants. I wasn't really depressed. I just didn't feel good. Right. We can get you on Adderall to up your energy. And I'm like, I don't want to be on Adderall. I'm 21 years old. Like I just don't feel good. And they didn't have any answers. And so I, my mom started actually studying a lot about natural remedies Mm. and herbs and all of this stuff because we weren't getting the answers that we wanted. It was just kind of a band-aid method. And so eventually she also started having me get foot zones and this guy would come over to our house and he would zone my feet. And I was just amazed. I'm like, how does he know? I haven't told him one thing. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say anything. And he'd be like, you feel like this, this, you have this going on, you have these symptoms. And I was like, yeah, I do. And so I could just tell that it was amazing. And after I would get it done, sometimes I was very tired mm-hmm. um, because I w- it was starting the detox process for me. And so eventually in my healing journey, through learning natural medicine, and 
I started getting better and better and better. And I kept getting zone, zoned every month. Mm-hmm. And it would help flush my lymph and my kidneys and my liver and my brain and all of these things. And I could just feel a difference. And after my zones, I wasn't as tired. Right. And I was kind of starting to get energy back. So the more consistent you were with yes. them, the better and better you yes, were feeling. Yes, consistency mm-hmm. is key. And so eventually... My mom was like, you would be an amazing foot zoner. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, gross. I don't want to work on the feet. I'm like, are you serious? I've already not felt good for this many years. I want to be out of the health field, not in the health field, because I've already dealt with being at doctor's offices after doctor's offices. And she's like, okay, well, I just have this feeling that you would be amazing. And so... And I always hated feet. I never let anyone touch my feet. Mm -hmm. Um, But I did kind of feel like, wow, you really can kind of tell what's going on in someone's body and then clear it with your hands. Like, that's amazing. It is. It's absolutely amazing. And so I decided to go to school for it. I One of my favorite foot zoners, um, she had an opening in her class and it was kind of like a meant to be. I actually stopped doing my job. And just went to foot zone school and it was incredible. And I could just tell I was supposed to do it. And it was very hard for me. My first day, I almost quit Mm. because I was working on these feet. And I'm like, oh, this is so (laughs) gross. I don't want to sit in front of feet all day. And then eventually I fell in love with the feet once Mm -hmm. I started learning. Learning more about it. Oh, I can totally relate. Feet are not my thing. Every time I go see Shay, I'm always like, I'm so sorry. I just feel (laughs) terrible because I I hate that. Even my little kids, like once they hit a certain age, I was like, no more foot rubs. Like mom can't handle it anymore. But I love that your mom is the one that kind of saw this this gift that you have and saw this path that was there for you because not only did she see that it worked so well for you and your healing, I think that you also are very gifted with what Mm -hmm. you do. And I can just say that personally, um, I wish there was a, there were a million shades out there Uh for all of you girls. I feel like I recommend you to so many people and I'm probably going to shoot myself in my own foot. No pun intended (laughs) because I'm, sending so many people to you, but no. that's, that's okay. I love it. I love it too. Cause you know, I, I believe in, um, obviously taking a holistic approach when it comes to healing yes. the body. Yes. And I recognize that, um, in my own healing journey, I've talked about it here on this podcast before, um, about some of the things that I've been dealing with, with my own health, um, mm-hmm. for many years, and I've come mm-hmm. a long way. And if you've listened to any of my episodes, you could go back Um, It was the one that I talked about fibroid or uterine fibroids. And I was talking about how interesting it is that emotions are so connected to so many physical symptoms. And I I did this whole thing about how all of these different things that manifest themselves like uterine fibroids or or ovarian cysts or anything like that, that Mm -hmm. there's a lot of times an emotional connection to it. So I had dedicated, I decided to not dedicate. I decided that I I needed to take better care of the emotional side of things. Yes. As a practitioner myself, like I I was taking care of the physical. Yep. I was taking care of even mindset and all of that, but there was still like I needed I needed help from another practitioner to kind of help me work through some things that I wasn't able to even be conscious of or even aware mm-hmm. of. And um I sorry to keep talking, but I just wanted no. to share the first time that I met Shay. Yes. Um, we actually had hired her at Mixers to come and help with a retreat that we had put on. Yeah. And um, and sh- it just so happened after a lot of the girls that were there um, that they were like, do you want to come down and have a little session? And I thought, I do, because yeah. I'm so curious about this. I want to know a little bit more about it. And I'm so glad I did. And I remember saying to you, all right, I know I'm supposed to be sitting here and be all relaxed but I actually want you to speak out loud what it is that you're feeling and seeing and you know all of these things that you're learning because I want to learn a little bit more about it. Yeah. And I remember you kind of started off with like a little bit and then I'd ask questions. You'd be like, oh, you really want to know. So yes. you started like going into you know detail and I was very impressed with Shay's knowledge of the human anatomy. And I knew she was, I knew she knew what she was talking about. I could tell that you had a very good education. Um, and so it wasn't just this woo woo thing. I could tell she really understood the systems of the body and she understood how they correlated and how they worked together and where there could be an issue. And, um, without her knowing anything of my background, it was as if you were just completely seeing like you, I remember said things like, um, you knew that I had a cyst on my kidney. 
I mean, how did, how did you know that you knew I had two dogs? Like it was just crazy. All of these things that, that you knew. And is it, is it kind of like intuitive? Is that what it is? Or what is it that you're feeling or how is this working? Yes. It's very intuitive. So that's something I learned when I started to zone people is you learn the anatomy, which I love. I love the anatomy because I think even if someone isn't intuitive, they can still go and clean a lot of systems in mm-hmm. your body because they know how to do it. They know how to trigger the organs and they know how to flush the lymph and all of that sort of stuff. But that's kind of when I learned that I did have a gift mm-hmm. because when I would work on people, I almost, I kind of would hear different things or feel different things. And that's where my blunt personality really came in to help me because I think a lot of people would have been scared to say something like, yeah, you have two dogs. I mean, what if you hated dogs, (laughs) right? Yeah. So, but I tried to follow that. And then the gift, I feel like developed more and more and more. Mm -hmm. So that was really incredible. And as far as the education, like I really take pride in the school that I went to. I went to Wellness Life Zone mm-hmm. in Sandy, and they were amazing. So some um, foot zone schools just have different criteria, and criteria. And this one was like hardcore. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I guess if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna go all in and Absolutely. try to be the best that I can be with it. And so I really loved going to that school, and I love my instructor and everything that I learned there. And I feel like it helped develop my gifts. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, I know. I think it's just so amazing. So, but let's say that you are going to a foot zoner that doesn't have the same intuitive gifts. Um, There's still so much. I mean, I've been to other foot zoners, not often. I think I had been twice before Mm -hmm. I met Shay. Um, And they still were able to do a lot Um, because tell us like what it is that makes foot zoning so effective yeah. and why, why the feet. And I know you don't just use feet, your hands and head and ears yes. and all of these things, but these little trigger points, right? Yes. Is that where you're yes. going? Yes. So there's okay. different acupressure points and different systems in the feet. And there's hundreds and thousands of nerves mm-hmm. that are in the feet. And so when you trigger them with your hands, I use my hands and I use gemstones and all those things you can tell how someone's liver is functioning, their kidneys are functioning. You you can tell if they have cysts, you can tell if they have hormone problems, depression, anxiety, and all of those things. When you do those those systems, that's kind of how it clears the feet and then you can tell their emotions and whatnot. Yeah. So you said like acu like acupressure. Yes. So it's kind of like going to an acupuncturist in a way where yes. there's all of these exactly. organ systems in our body mm-hmm. and in our feet, there's a connection. Yeah. And is it nerve connection? Is that what it is? Yeah, you, tr- you can trigger the nerves, but also the organs, just the different triggering points trigger mm-hmm. so many different things and clean the blood, the cells, all of that. So mm-hmm. they trigger lots of different systems in the body. Yeah. Which is fascinating. A- and amazing. It's we amazing. Because some an issue, a health issue can be yeah, you're having a liver issue, mm-hmm. but it could be your lymph into your liver. It could be yeah. your blood. I mean, and that's why I've loved working on the feet because it's an, an analysis. Yeah, And I'm like, I do the same, the same zone on everyone, um, but I can tell everyone's feet is so different mm-hmm. and where it feels crunchy or rocky or sharp or sometimes even working on someone, I'll be like, oh my gosh, I feel really nauseous. And they're Mm -hmm. like, I've been so nauseous. You can just tell, or there'll be swelling Mm -hmm. around where the liver point is or the kidneys or whatever. And so that's kind of what I loved about it is because people come in and they're like, I don't feel good, Mm -hmm. but they get all this blood work done. And a lot of times blood work says that you're good to go. Right. And they're not, they don't feel good. And Mm -hmm. so you can tell when their thyroid's crunchy, you know, some people don't speak their truth. Yeah. They're really scared. And I feel like out of our seven chakras, I feel like our energy either leaves in fear and doubt Mm -hmm. or it leaves in love and trust. And Mm -hmm. if we're fearful to say how we feel, that can cause thyroid issues, or we could not have, you know, vitamin B12 or iodine deficiencies. And so it's really important when I'm working on the feet that you know, how's their life? How's their relationships? How's their marriage? Um, how's their work environment? Are they exposed to a lot of toxins? Are they eating a lot of toxins? Um, do they feel trapped? You know, because someone can be taking all of the supplements in the world, Mm -hmm. but we heal in four realms, I believe, which is physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. And so if you're out of balance, I believe healing's all about balance. Mm -hmm. And then the harmony of it, you know, I think 
harmony trumps action sometimes. And I learned that from a doctor that was telling me this lady, she would wake up every morning and she would juice wheatgrass and she would take all of her supplements and she only ate Mm -hmm. raw foods. Right. And she had full-blown cancer Mm -hmm. because her intent or her focus was, I don't want to have cancer. Right. It was based in fear. She was fearful of mm-hmm. cancer. And sure, so when of she course, would, but yes. yes. Mm-hmm. So when she would miss her supplements for a day, it was like, mm-hmm. I'm going to become more sick. Mm-hmm. And so he really worked on her with changing her focus to like health yes. and wellness. And that was a huge thing for me in my healing journey. I mean, when I got really sick at 21, I wouldn't say I started to feel all the way better till 26. Mm-hmm. And... um You know, I still had some stuff going on, but I was night and day difference. I mean, I really thought I was going to die. I never thought I was going to get married. I never thought I was going to have kids and not because I was being negative, but my body wasn't functioning. Like I was shutting down. And so that's where I want to go into like labels. Mm -hmm. Um, Doctors wanted to diagnose me with all different things. I mean, it was kind of a guessing game. They went, they did go into autoimmune. They were pretty sure I had autoimmune, Mm -hmm. but it was like, maybe you have lupus, maybe you have fibromyalgia, maybe you have Lyme, maybe you have rheumatoid arthritis, you know? And I was like, these labels are heavy. Right. And some doctors would be like, I don't think you're going to be able to have kids Mm -hmm. or, you know, your, your organs are only half functioning. Like you're losing all this weight. And I'm like, this is dark. And so my mom, she was like, don't ever take on a label. Good for your mom. Mm -hmm. And I was like, why? Like at first I didn't understand Mm because when you take on a label, in Western medicine, that's like, then this is what you Good. do we for it. We figured it out. Yes, and now people, we know what to do. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. And some people are so looking for a label. But what I realized is like taking on that label was mm-hmm. so heavy. And so I never really did. I never took on, I have this. I would say I have these symptoms right. that I'm working through. And I think that harmony or mm-hmm. that balance created me to heal because I know lots of women who have had the same diagnosis mm-hmm. as me and they're not really moving forward. Right. And so there's just power in, you know, I have these symptoms, Mm -hmm. I'm not taking this on and I can overcome it. Right. And it's not necessarily about denial. I can actually completely relate to your story Mm because I feel like I've had the same, um, same experiences in a way. So, you know, as a practitioner, what I teach, what you're calling harmony, we Mm -hmm. call holistic, right? And that's basically what it is. And I would show people a plate and I would say, you know, um, help isn't just about the food that we eat on our plate or the way we move our body, but it's all of these different areas in our life. So how are we feeding ourselves with our creativity, with our relationships, with our spirituality? I mean, just all these different aspects. And when we are looking for healing, we need to make sure that we are not starving one area of our body and overfeeding another. There Mm -hmm. needs to be harmony. I like that word. Mm -hmm. Um, And this balanced approach. And so I know that this is where a lot of people get kind of nervous and not sure like how to handle this approach to healing because it is a little different. When it is with an allopathic form of medicine, um, it is very much like symptom-based. It's like we want to take care of the symptom and, and we're going to you're feeling yeah. exhausted all the time. You, you know, are having mm-hmm. whatever symptom. So we're going to help get rid of that symptom by giving yeah. you this prescription or telling yeah. you to stop eating gluten or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then also just going back to the labeling, by labeling it, it also makes you feel like you have a path, right? Yeah. And that that's what happened to me too. I mean, um, I started dealing with autoimmune issues, which I think is interesting because I was also a competitive um, endurance athlete. Yes. I didn't manifest itself until I was in my 30s, but same, same thing yes. where it was like Hashimoto's mm-hmm. and, you know, all of these different autoimmune um diagnoses that um and and we did try to go down these paths, but then it was frustrating because I thought. I'm doing everything and nothing seems to be really working, working like it should be. Um, and, and then I became the almost perfectionist, you know, person with my healing where I was maybe like this uh, patient that you're talking about with the cancer, where it's like, I did everything right. I was mm-hmm. like, I will wake up at this time and I will yeah. make sure I meditate and I will make sure I have my green juice and I'm going to take yeah. every supplement and I'm going to do all of these things perfectly. And I talked about this again in another episode um, last spring when we were talking about the power of the mind, but um, it was an epiphany that kind of I had right before I met you was that everything that I'm doing is for my good. It is good. It is helpful and it is effective, but I'm focusing so much on it 
doing these things to fix me that I'm actually getting in my own way of yeah. my healing. Yeah. And so I've had to learn, you girls, it's hard. We're learning. We're always learning. It's why we have these conversations because hopefully something we're saying today is going to resonate with you. And maybe it could be like a total 180 in, in mm-hmm. the course that you're taking. But um, I, th- what came to me was that I need to get out of my own way and I need to find other people that are, you know, gifted and that have yeah. the skills that I don't have to, to look at the picture a little differently and help me reframe it. And yeah. that's where you came in and it's been really, really helpful. And Thank so that's you. why I was excited to have you on because I just you. wanted other women out there that are, you know, doing mm-hmm. everything perfect and, you know, trying to find the, the, the results, you know, yes. that are promised when you do A, B, C, and D. Yeah. Um, maybe there's a different way. Maybe there's a different way to look at things um, in a different you know, tool that can be used. And that's what foot zoning has been for me. Yeah. And I love that because it really does take a village. Mm -hmm. And I always say like, believe in the magic of it. Like when you start to put out there, like I'm going to find the right supplements. I'm going to find the right people. I'm going to find the right therapists. I mean, I went to therapy and that was huge for me. And when I started putting things out there in like, I'm going to heal all four realms, I would have, you know, you should reach out to this person or this, and you can get a lot of information, which can be overwhelming. Mm -hmm. So you really need to follow your heart and your spirit because you can spend a lot of money down a rabbit hole of trying to heal. And so using your higher guidance, Mm -hmm. but when you start to put out there, I'm going to get better and I'm going to find the right things. And it's going to take time. You know, I always wondered for me why I wasn't, I would have so many prayers and Mm -hmm. so many blessings. And I was so hopeful that I would wake up one morning all Mm -hmm. the way better because I did have a lot of faith. I did have a lot of faith and blessings and that I could be healed. And, um, I wasn't delivered overnight. Mm -hmm. And I've come to realize that that was because if I was delivered overnight, I wouldn't be able to help the people Mm -hmm. like I can now. Because when they tell me I have this symptom, I have this symptom, I have this symptom. If I would have just gotten better, I'd be like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I had that too. But one day I woke up and I was just all the way healthy. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't the case. And so now I'm like, okay, are you taking this supplement? Have you tried this detox? Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Are you doing therapy? Are you cold plunging? I mean, Mm -hmm. you know, I love cold plunging. Mm -hmm, And yes. And so just paying attention to all of those things is very helpful. Yeah. And it's not going to be the same for everybody. It's just knowing that there's these different tools that are out there. And I don't Mm -hmm. think Shay and I are saying that you have to go and do every single one of these things because you can get down the road where you're like, where I was, where I was like, I'm going to do everything. And then it's like almost too much. Right. So no, but I, I love that. I think that that's, it's just good for us to know. Um, but I also think it's really important for us. And I know I talk about this a lot and, and I hope it brings hope, you know, I, Mm -hmm. it does for me. But it's good to remember that our body is never working against us. Our body is, it knows how to heal. It is always in a healing process. So even Mm -hmm. though we like want these overnight miracles where we're just going to wake up symptom free and that has happened. We've heard these stories. I mean, we know people that have had these miraculous, you know, overnight healings, but don't think that the miracle is not happening for you. It's Mm -hmm. just, is happening over time. It's, you know, when we get a cut on our finger, you can watch a time lapse video video and yeah. it's like it's amazing our body mm-hmm. knows exactly what it's doing so yeah. the same goes for whether it's with inflammation in our body yeah. or it's cancer or it's depression or anxiety yeah. or whatever it yeah. is the symptom that's manifesting is just telling us it's in a healing process yes, right exactly right. and so that's one thing when with getting diagnosed with autoimmune i'm like I don't want to take on the belief system that my body does not function right. right. And for a long time, I feel like I did feel that way because of my symptoms. But again, believing, you know what? No, my body does know how to function right. Yeah. And it is working through healing these things. And then I just need to give it what it needs. Give it what it needs. Yeah. yeah. And and I know we do, I keep saying this, but we do talk about this a lot, but it's like this conversation just continues on and on and, and we can keep mm-hmm talking, you know, about how important it is to give our body the foundations of what it needs. Mm -hmm. And when we do, then it can function optimally. Our bodies are able to function optimally. So it's the, it's the discovering what it needs. Now we know like 
number one root cause of hormone disruption or hormone imbalance is nutrient deficiency, but there's also toxicity and there's also stress, right? Those are the three biggies. And I think that's the case with most dis-ease in the body. These are the three things. So if you can, you know, obviously we can give the body the nutrients that it's not getting. Mm -hmm. Um, We want to eat our most nutritious food as possible, um, but then supplement where needed. And there are certain types of supplements that work for us, you know, that Mm-hmm. Somebody like Shay can like help us to know, hey, you know, you may need a, a methylated B12. Exactly. Right. You yes. may need a little more um, iodine. Yes. You may need, you know, some things like that. Um, instead of just throwing everything at it, it's, it's nice to have a practitioner mm-hmm. that can kind of help guide you, whether it's yes. through the tool of testing. Um, you know, we test through blood work, saliva, mm-hmm. urine tests, these kinds of things. But foot zoning in and of itself is a form of testing, it right? Is, and yes. helping us to be able to understand, you know, yep. where there are there's some things lacking, yep. right? Yep, exactly. And so I love every person that I work on. It's you gain you grow a connection with them. Mm-hmm. And I think the feet are very symbolic. I think Christ would wash the feet and work on the feet for different reasons, but I do think the feet can clean mm-hmm. the body. I think it's a symbolism of cleaning, not just because the feet were washed, but as you work on it, you're washing the body. Mm-hmm. And so when someone goes into a foot zone session, just be prepared to relax. And, you know, I always tell my clients when they're in there, like, don't worry, whatever mm-hmm. comes up, comes up. And this is just something that's gone on. And, Sometimes things won't come up. I think if people are in a space that they don't want to share right. what's going on in their life, then, you know, us as energy workers or foot zone practitioners, if you have the intuition, you won't always know because that goes against their agency. Mm-hmm. But I do think if people are in a place that they really want to move forward in their life, there's going to be like, wow, you know, you're doing this or you're doing this. And some people aren't in alignment with their higher self. Mm-hmm they're making choices that aren't serving them or they have addictions that aren't serving them. And, or even I work on a lot of women and us women are like this, that work out, work out, work out, work out, work out. And I'm like, your adrenals are tanked. Yeah. They're completely tanked. Like they're living off of caffeine, which Mm -hmm. is always putting their body into fight or flight. Yeah. And when you're in fight or flight, I mean, how does we know that your body doesn't heal in fight or flight? So we're taking all this caffeine to go do our workouts and then stimulating our adrenal glands and secreting more cortisol and then expecting to heal and then coming home and taking more caffeine to go on our day. And I'm like, for what? And that was what was really hard for me as an athlete. I grew up, you know, I played very competitive soccer my whole life. I ran track. I did all these things. And I was like, when my doctor first told me, how about you start going on some walks? I'm like, wow, yeah. that's stupid. I felt like going backwards. <laughs> yeah. I'm I like, felt the same. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not even going to go on walks. Yeah, like, like that is useless, yes. you know, energy being expended yes, there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I was like, when you let me know I can run again, I'll go. But for now I'm not. Yeah. And sometimes your healing's as long as it takes till you're willing to be really humble. And so then I started going on walks and I'm like, wow, I never do grounding. Mm -hmm. I never connect with the earth. And sometimes when I was really sick, I felt like I didn't want to be here. Mm. Um, I wasn't like ever planning out, you know, like I'm going to kill myself or anything like that. But I was like, wow, I don't really feel like I have that much of a purpose. Like I'm laying in bed a lot. You know, I had to stop going to school. I had Mm -hmm. to stop running track at the university. And I mean, that was my life looking back now, it's a huge blessing, but I just had to realize I don't need to work out this hard. Mm -hmm. Why am I working out this hard? I mean, I would run 10 miles a day. Then I'd go to CrossFit. I mean, why, Mm -hmm. you know, and I, I, thankfully for me, I've, I've been very blessed. I didn't ever have body image issues. I know a lot of women did, but I had this, I identified as an athlete Yeah, and I don't identify as an athlete anymore. Mm -hmm. I am athletic, but I don't need to identify as that. I'm Shaylee. And I like to identify on as my attributes of, Mm -hmm. you know, what I feel like I am as a person. And so I started walking, you know, I started getting in the river. I started doing these different things. I started doing yoga. At first I hated yoga. (laughs) I was like, I can't even touch my toes. And, but it was the calmness. Mm -hmm. I think I, I think athletes and women that are addicted to working out, they don't like feeling calm Mm -hmm. because then they're in their thoughts. And so now, yes, I still work out. I still go running. I love lifting weights, but I'm not obsessed. And right. I do what my body tells me that day. And that's what I've learned in my healing. Listen to what you need. And I recommend everyone, you know, for me, I everyone should get foot zones differently. Some people need them every two weeks. Some people need them once a month. You know, some people are feeling really good and they can go every other month. 
even though I'm better, I still have my protocol of things to that I know help me. Right. And so I get my feet zoned every month and it's been a beautiful thing just to keep me on top of things. Mm-hmm. And then I have certain things like I love magnesium baths. I think magnesium baths are essential. I think oh, our body mm-hmm. needs magnesium. And I love bathing in bennonite clay to help me detox. And I love sitting in the sauna and the infrared sauna. And I'm now trying to create a life where I have so many healthy things that I'm doing that it's become who I am versus, yeah, I go to the gym you know, all these days, but how often do I sit in the sauna? How often do I have Mm -hmm. a green smoothie? How often do I juice celery or cucumber juice? And I was a girl that ate McDonald's every single day Mm -hmm. because I was running in college. I'd walk to school and I'd pass by McDonald's. And so after a workout, when you're in amazing shape, I never thought about my insides. So I'm like, I'm going to go eat two Big Macs. Yeah, you're you're like, if it doesn't show up on the outside, I'm fine. Like, I can totally do this. Yeah, I get it. And then that's how I had to learn about self-love. You know, I loved studying a lot of Buddhism. Mm -hmm. And he talks on self-love and, you know, how you love yourself, how you treat your liver. Mm -hmm. And I look around at the world and I'm like, wow, I really was just like drinking a lot of soda. I was Mm -hmm. eating a lot of hamburgers and fries and candy. And I never put anything good into my body. And then I was expecting to perform, Mm -hmm. which I did in my young age. But eventually at 21, my adrenals were shot. Yeah. And so now I try to do everything as a form of Mm -hmm. self-love. Just with how I treat myself, what I put into my body. And it's been a huge game changer for me. Yeah, it's so beautiful. I'm I'm like proud listening to you oh, as you. I'm like an older person looking at you <laughs> and and seeing like that you've gone through some of the same things that I have and have come to the same conclusion. Yeah. Um the word that when I was, you know, when I was transitioning like you just described like from being I as identifying as a competitive athlete, mm-hmm. um I was in the fitness world. Mm-hmm. I did like fitness competition. Like that was very much who Cody was, right? Yes. And it was very hard for me when I was told like, okay, you know what? All of this that you think you're doing to help like achieve health is actually completely destroying your health. You yes. need to calm it down, you know, mm-hmm. just get out of this fight or flight and living off of stress hormones um, and eating healthy, but you need to eat more. I mean, there's just all these things that were very hard for me to transition. So like exercising less, actually eating more, Mm -hmm. sleeping in and not getting up at the crack of dawn so I could go get my long rides in or my swims in or whatever. Um, It was a big, it was a big change. But what helped me was similar was that I, I started feeling better because I was creating more balance. And that's what I was lacking. It's like that yin and that yang. Um, I needed a little more of the yin in my life. So the walking, the grounding. I also love cold plunging, being Mm -hmm. out in nature, forest Mm -hmm. bathing, um, all of these things. And so the word that I would always, whenever I was thinking about what I was going to do that day was, is it going to nourish me? Mm -hmm. So nourish was my word. Self love is a great, you know, word too yeah. because um, it's the same thing. It's not about beating yourself up to become healthy, girls. And I, I hope that you understand that it's about mm-hmm. nourishing. It's about self love. It's about giving mm-hmm. your body and your mind and your spirit what it needs and creating as much balance as possible. Now, it's impossible to be balanced all the time. I don't like it when we say we need to be balanced because yes. you're always, as women, especially, we're fluctuating. Yes. But doing the things that help to support balance. That's Mm -hmm. what we're going for. And yeah. And I love that. Yeah. And that's where it's like, I know this might be totally like you girls that are listening might be thinking, okay, what is Cody even bringing this up for? Because this is woo woo. It's not, I promise you. Mm -hmm. It might sound woo -woo because it's a little more on the Eastern side of like health approaches, right? It's a little, you know, it's a little Mm -hmm. way from our normal and our culture, but it's, been around for thousands of years Mm -hmm. and it's very effective and it might just be exactly what you need. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I wanted to share. I wanted to share that this has been something that's been very helpful and healing for me. I go um, get my foot zone every month, Mm -hmm. at least sometimes sooner than that. I love it every time I go. And I do recognize too, that every time I do get my foot zone, that um, 
I am making progress. Now, it doesn't mean that I have ever been able to sit down with um, Shay and have her go, oh my goodness, there's so much crunchiness going on in your feet. No, like there's still stuff that Mm -hmm. I'm still working on, but I'm hoping that you're seeing and feeling some improvements as well, right? Oh, of course. Yes, the body wants to heal, like you said. And even if you feel good, I mean, we're exposed to so many toxins. And so get your feet done, see how you like it. And a lot of doctors, even though people think like, zonings in the woo-woo, but reflexology has been practiced for yeah. forever. And people really believe in it and doctors really believe in it and all of that stuff. And so that's one thing I love is because I think even more mm-hmm. doctors are starting to believe in it. Like I work in a doctor's office too, yeah. you know, um, doing foot zoning and totally a believer in it and what it does for the body because it's Absolutely. amazing. Yeah. And there's a lot of actual science that backs up the effectiveness of it. So mm-hmm. it's not just something that you, you know, us hippie dippies um, like to do. Yeah. It's something that is very well researched. And like I said, it's been used for thousands of years in order to yes. help assist the body of healing. So I hope this was super interesting for you. I know that this has been something that has completely changed um, my life. And I feel very blessed that I have this tool in my life. And that's what it's about. It's about just keeping our minds open, being open to the things that are meant for us. And I know I talk about intuition a lot. Each of us, you know, Shay has a a gift with her intuition, but so do we. We all have that gift. And it's really important that we are our own best health advocates, that we are the ones that are seeking the answers um, and being open to the the tools and the practitioners and the resources that are out there um, to help assist us, right? Yep. Yeah. And just following it in love and trust, you know, don't have fear and doubt in your journey. It's really, really hard not to. I was stuck in that for a long time, but go forward in love and trust. You'll be re- led to the right foot zoner. You know, you don't have to go see a specific one. Mm-hmm. If you're led to a certain one, try it. If you like it, keep them. If not, go to someone different, but don't be so stuck that I have to go to this person, this doctor, this routine to be able to have my healing. Um, just let it flow. Let the universe, you know, help you and you'll be guided. I love it. And I know that's to be true. So I'm excited that we've been able to have this conversation and I hope that something that you feel was beneficial for you. And hopefully maybe it's given you some ideas, um, and maybe even a whole new direction in the way that you're going to approach your health and wellness. We would love it if you shared this episode with the girls in your life, because I guarantee your mom, your sister, your best friend, somebody in your life, is needing to hear this um, conversation today. So please share this episode. It helps more of us to be able to um, become those best advocates. Also, we appreciate all of the amazing um, reviews that you guys have been sending. Thank you so much for um, giving us a rating and review on, on, on podcasts. And also now we are on YouTube. So I always forget to say subscribe and like because yes. I feel silly saying that, but we are on YouTube and we're excited that we're now growing this community on this um, platform as well. There's all these different ways that we love connecting with all of you. We want to be where you are. So if there's anything that you have loved about these episodes or something that you would like us to talk more about on these episodes, that's how you can reach us is by reaching out, leaving your comments, leaving your reviews or DMing us on social media or getting into our Mixers Girl community. Um, you can join that by going to our website. Just go to the top right. It says community. That's where we're having conversations. So even after this conversation today, the community is going to be on there talking even more about this and sharing maybe their own experiences with foot zoning or reflexology. And if you have questions that you want to ask me or you want to ask Shay, that's where you can do it. So, all right, girls, I hope that you loved this episode and until next time, I hope you have a very happy and healthy week. I look forward to talking again next Tuesday. Bye. Bye.